Hello and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini Maria Rieger and today we're talking about how to parent your Aquarius child when you're a Gemini mom or a Gemini dad. This video is at the specific request of one of the viewers so if that is you this video is specifically for you. Um, I am also taking requests on videos if there's any topic you would like to see covered, if there's any sign combination you would like to see covered, please leave a comment below and I will get to it in the order in which I receive them. First, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular, positive parenting with astrology content. If you are interested in booking a reading with me, a one-on-one -on -one reading, that link to book is down below. If you are interested in booking me for an event, Yes, I will travel, uh, so let me know. The booking link for that is also in the video description below. Uh, this sign combination is one of my favorites. Whether it's a parent-child combination, as we'll talk about today, or it's like a partnership, a romantic relationship, this is a really awesome sign combination. This is also a sign combination that is very personal to me because as you all know, I am a Gemini sun with heavy Gemini energy in my chart. Gemini Mercury at zero degrees Gemini, Gemini Venus, Gemini sun. My sister is an Aquarius sun with the Gemini moon. So my sister is nine years younger than me. I remember the day she was born as if it were yesterday. <laughs> Uh, and growing up, I was a lot like a second mom to her because I was older when she was born. And as she got older, we became more like friends. And now she's my best friend. So this is a sign combination I know a lot about and it can work really well. And we're going to talk about all the reasons for that. And one last admin thing. We are very, very close to monetizing this channel. When it is monetized, when we have a thousand subscribers, which is very going to be very soon, my sister and I are going to do a live stream video. My sister is a medical doctor. She's going to answer a lot of questions about how stress affects the body and autoimmune diseases, which is her area of expertise. That is going to be a really, really interesting live that you won't want to miss. So please share this channel with your friends. Help us get to a thousand subscribers as soon as possible so we can do that event for you guys. Now, as always, we're going to start with a high level overview of Aquarius energy, Gemini energy, and then we're going to talk about the main kind of points regarding the dynamic of this sign combination. And we're going to talk about them mostly from the point of view of the parent, because remember, as I always say on this channel, the onus of the parent-child relationship, the responsibility of the relationship always rests with a parent because the parent's the adult, the parent has more life experience. It's the parent's responsibility to manage this relationship and make sure it's a healthy relationship. So Aquarius is fixed air. It's very interesting because we'll talk about the nature of air, which is air is hard to contain, almost impossible to contain, right? It is uh, an energy which covers a lot of breath, covers a lot of things, a lot of subjects, for example, but in a superficial way, not at always in an in-depth way. It's an, it's an energy where the chart holder has a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things, not necessarily profound knowledge about a handful of things. So Aquarian people definitely tend to have a lot of knowledge about a lot of different subjects. They also have a thirst for knowledge, as Gemini does too. They love learning. Now, Aquarius's first line reaction is to analyze. Aquarius people, uh, being a detached air sign, they tend to approach the world and experiences and relationships from a place of clinical detachment and logic. It's kind of a stereotype to say that Aquarian people are like aliens because they, they tend to have that clinical detachment when they're analyzing situations, even relationship situations. But that's the main point to take away is that with air people, especially Aquarius and Gemini, which is the focus of the video today, uh, with air sign people, their natural way of looking at things is with logic and detachment, rationality, weighing pros and cons rationally. Water sign people will intuit what to do. Air sign people will think analytically and weigh pros and cons before making a, de a decision about what to do. Now, it's also the nature of air to go around obstacles rather than face them head on. That tends to give air sign people 
the tendency to not be confrontational. They don't like direct confrontation. They tend not to be super like directly assertive, okay? Now I will say Aquarius seems to be much more comfortable in my experience with direct confrontation and direct communication than Gemini and Libra, the other air signs. And I have some theories about that. Uh, one is that Aquarius is a fixed sign, it's fixed modality, whereas Libra is cardinal and Gemini is mutable. We'll get to the mutable nature of Gemini here in a few minutes. But also remember that in traditional astrology, Aquarius was co-ruled by Uranus and Saturn. Now Saturn is a much more, when we think of Saturn, we think of a much more controlled energy. Saturn is also the ruler of Capricorn. If you know Capricorn people, they are very calm and stoic and tend to be controlled, very emotionally controlled, depending on the other energy in the chart. But Capricorn in general tends to be a very emotionally controlled, stoic sign, okay? So Capricorn is a sign, an energy that is much more comfortable with direct confrontation, much more comfortable with self-autonomy. So Aquarius seems to be much better at direct confrontation and standing up for themselves than Gemini and Libra. And also, Aquarius is often referred to as the revolutionary sign since it's ruled by Uranus or in traditional astrology, if you're going by that interpretation, it was co-ruled by Uranus along with Saturn. So Uranus is definitely the planet, the revolutionary planet. Whenever you're experiencing a personal Uranus transit in your chart, whatever it is touching in your chart, it is blowing up. It is dismantling rapidly in order to rebuild, transform and rebuild. That's kind of the cycles that we tend to go through. So that's the important thing to take away from that uh, is Aquarius is uh, Aquarius people have a penchant for things that are different. They like to be different within the context of the group. We'll get to that in a second, but it is known as a revolutionary sign. It is known as a sign and energy that can advance radical change very quickly. Now to make those radical changes, it helps to have that fixed modality, right? Aquarian people, tend to be very open-minded. All the Aquarian people I know, and I know a ton, are very open-minded. On the other side, they're very steadfast in their beliefs. It is not easy to get them to change their mind. Geminis, we change our mind all the time. We'll get to that in a second. But Aquarian people, it is much more challenging to persuade them to change their mind about something. But that's necessary because if they're gonna be this revolutionary force, they need the fixed ideals. It's your, if you're not, you know, if you're not going to have, if you're not going to be steadfast in your morals and your beliefs, you're not going to be able to affect change on that scale. So it makes sense within the context of all the energies. And as we said, Aquarian people tend to be very open-minded. Now, remember, Aquarius is a very social energy. It is associated with the 11th house, which is the house of society, house of the group, peers. Aquarians like to be different within the context of the group. They need to feel like they belong somewhere to some group. They need to identify with some group. So yes, they tend to be different, but within the context of the group. And I have a video on whether your Aquarius child is, you know, um, kind of radically different or more traditional. And it's very interesting because that can go either way. You, when we think of Aquarius people, we think of, oh, the, the you know, purple hair and they dress differently and all this stuff. That's the cliche, the stereotype, and that could be true, right? They like to be different within the context of the group, different from other people in the group, but they like to belong, right? Uh, they like to have, they, they wanna have this identity as part of the group, know where they fit in in society. On the other hand, and I attribute this largely to the co to Aquarius's co-rulership with Saturn, they can be conservative. And that's what I'm talking about when I say they can be conservative or fixed in their morals, their ideals. And that's very important. We need people like that, right? Not like wishy-washy uh, Gemini energy. So it's just an important thing to keep in mind. And Aquarius, in this respect, it's kind of hard to pin down. Okay, so we're gonna do a high level overview of Gemini energy. And I have tons of videos and a playlist on Gemini energy, Gemini parents, Gemini kids, and you are free to go uh, check those out to get more of a uh, more detailed explanation of Gemini energy. So here, here I'll just give like a high level overview. Gemini is mutable air. So mutable means it waffles between cardinal and fixed, right? Aquarius is fixed air. 
Gemini's mutable air. Okay. Both masculine energy signs, both approach the world from the same overall place, logic, detachment, you know, clinically considering things, weighing pros and cons, being very rational. Both these energies are very rational when thinking about and dealing with emotions. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. But um, Gemini people are much more apt to change their minds, okay? So in other videos, I describe this as, you know, people say Gemini people, stereotypically, are wishy-washy, we don't know what we want, we don't know what we mean, okay. The nature of the energy, of Gemini energy, is we are constantly taking in, processing, gathering, processing, and analyzing data. It's a very quick, almost instantaneous sometimes, process. And we are constantly doing this in our heads. It's really hard to get out of our heads. We almost have this constant mental activity going on, which is one of the reasons Gemini people, air people in general, mostly Gemini, are can be prone to anxiety, okay? Because uh, it's hard for us to get out of our heads. So we're constantly taking in data. So we're constantly taking in data, processing, analyzing data, and reaching conclusions. The problem with that is that this is a potentially endless stream of data, especially now, because we have so many sources of data and information. So we can reach a conclusion today based on the data we know today. Tomorrow we can encounter new data, process it, and reach a different conclusion. And that is also our truth. It's not that we were lying yesterday. It's that yesterday that was our truth based on the information we had. And today we have a different truth based on the information we had. This is the basis for the, the stereotypical uh, description of Gemini as wishy-washy, right? Um, because we are constantly doing this process. So when you're the parent, when the Gemini is the parent, the main thing, the main problem with this particular quality is it leads to being an inconsistent parent, right? You can tell the kids some, one thing one day and the next day you've totally changed your mind on it. And that's okay. It's okay to change your mind, right? But the problem is sometimes you have to make a decision. You cannot keep, you know, ruminating over things indefinitely. I mean, you can, but you're not going to make ever make any decisions that way. So the way I deal with that personally and the way I recommend uh, Gemini parents to deal with this trait is to think ahead of time about the really important uh, high stakes things, right, regarding your kids and make decisions on that ahead of time. Because if you're going to get I mean, especially with Aquarius child, you, you there's always a tendency to like get embroiled in a never ending negotiation, especially with air people. So ahead of time, make decisions for yourself based on the very high stakes, really important boundaries you have with the kids. It, it could be, you know, you don't watch certain movies, you don't watch certain video games, you know, no smoking, no vaping, you know, things like this, whatever. I'm just, those are just examples. But there are always those no bargain issues and those no bargain issues, high stakes issues, you need to hold fast on those because those have the most impact on kids, right? Maybe, uh, you know, you're not out past a certain time once kids are older or driving, things like this. But hold fast on those decisions and don't be inconsistent regarding those boundaries because those are about safety. And there's always a reason. There are things that you have a reason for, not just because you don't want the kid to do it, because of safety, because of health, because of whatever else. And those few or handful of things, of rules, you know, hold fast on those. Make sure the kids know this is a no bargain issue. This I cannot negotiate on. Everything else is potentially up for negotiation. That's how we operate in my house. I tell my kid, look, I don't like rules. I like freedom. I don't like rules. I don't. I'm a Gemini myself. I don't like it. But we have very few hard and fast rules in my house. And the rules we have are there for a reason. It's for health, for safety, for whatever else. But they're there for a reason, mostly to health and safety stuff. Okay, it could be mental health, mental safety, or physical health and safety. But, you know, that's that's what I recommend to Gemini parents to deal with that because, you know, it's just the nature of our energy that we're inconsistent. And that's okay. Just accept that about yourself and, you know, move on, right? Because we have other good qualities. And this can also be a really good starting point for a conversation with your Aquarius child on things like boundaries and rules, right? Because you can say, look, I like freedom. You like freedom. We don't like to be encumbered with rules. And all the rules we have, we have reasons for them, right? It's not because 
the rule is there just for the rule. There's a reason for it, right? And maybe some rules are open for negotiation. You can sit down and then talk, especially with older kids, right? Adolescents and teens. Hey, what should we do about this? Here are the ideas I have. What are your ideas? When you invite the kids to participate in crafting rules or crafting boundaries, craft, you know, thinking about house rules, they're going to have, when they have more of a say in their environment and what happens to them, they will be more likely to, I don't like to say obey you, accept your guidance, right? They will be more likely to accept your guidance and do what you tell them to do because you've included them in the decision-making process. And as kids get older, especially adolescents and teens, it becomes more and more important, right? You gotta fill the kid's love bucket, as they say, and the kid's power bucket. Give them some say, age-appropriate say, in what happens to them. So, as we've said, these energies are very similar. You can expect a very intellectually challenging, intellectually stimulating relationship with your Aquarius child. You can expect really interesting conversations. As, ask them a lot of hypothetical questions. Hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You know, you can expect these really uh, intriguing uh, d discussions on really intriguing topics because you are both intellectuals with a thirst for knowledge and a thirst for learning. So we're going to get into like the more specific tips now. The first one we've already talked about is the Gemini parents pension for inconsistency. And I've talked about what to do about that and how to handle that. The other thing is you want to make sure you're being consistent in your emotions to your Aquarius child. Gemini's, we can be moody. It is another stereotype of our energy. We are, we tend to be moodier than Aquarius people, tend to change humors very quickly. So it's important that you're not communicating to your Aquarius child that you are upset or changing behaviors because of them, right? It's okay to say, hey, I'm, you know, not in a great mood today. It's nothing to do with you. It's because of X, Y, Z, right? And you want to make sure that you're con that you're conveying emotional consistency to your Aquarius child. You want to make sure you're not conveying that the child is somehow responsible for your mood or responsible for helping you get out of your bad mood into a better mood, right? And you also want to be conveying that to your Aquarius child that it's not your job, the parent's job, to make sure they're in a good mood or happy all the time. That, that that's something that the kids have to learn on their own with help from the parents how to self-regulate, right? How to bring themselves out of a funk, how to bring themselves out of bad moods. But the emotional consistency is really important. That's another area Gemini parents sometimes struggle with because of the moodiness. So you wanna make sure that whatever's going on with you, the parent personally, that the kid is not responsible or does not feel responsible for your state of mind and your emotions. And as kids get older, it's completely appropriate to speak to them about this and say, hey, I'm in a bad mood because of work or I'm just in a funk today and I don't know why, but it has nothing to do with you. That will help them understand, oh, mom or dad is just, you know, they have stuff going on with them, but it doesn't have to do with me, right? That's also very important. Okay, in addition to the pension for indecisiveness, Geminis love to negotiate. We're open to our minds being changed, right? We talked a little bit about this and why that is at the beginning of this video. To a Gemini person, Gemini sun or Gemini moon, negotiation is like breathing, okay? I've seen this with my sister who is a Gemini moon, with my son who is a Gemini moon. Negotiation is like breathing. So I see some people, some parents say, never negotiate with a kid. I don't believe that because I think negotiation is a good skill as long as both parties are represented and get to have their say. It's not just one party, you know, running roughshod over the other. So the Gemini parent is, we're very open to negotiations from the kids. So this goes hand in hand with some of the inconsistency and some of the indecisiveness. We're open to having our minds change. And the kids realize this. They realize this quickly. Oh, mom and dad, they'll say no, but you know, maybe tomorrow or an hour they'll change their mind. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Aquarius kids will pick up on that very quickly because the energy is so similar. So again, hold fast on those rules that are very important to you. And if you need to write them down, I have a hard time remembering everything, whether that's age related or just because I do a lot of stuff. The rules I have, like the really, uh, the no bargain issues that we have in our house, I write them down and I like post them in the house. These are the rules, house rules, right? To remind myself, yeah, I made a decision about this. I'm not open to negotiation on this particular issue. So if you have to do that, that's okay to remind yourself or remind your Aquarius child, hey, we've discussed this, or I've thought about this, and here's the answer. 
So please do not ask me again. Because what happens is the kids will figure out, oh, the Gemini parent is open to negotiation or they're open to changing their mind. So they'll keep asking you. And that pressure is makes Gemini, it really puts us, you know, in a very uh, anxious position. We do not like to feel pressure. When a Gemini feels pressured, we like flee or we'll just give in because we hate the pressure. We're very sensitive to that. So, you know, if you find that your kid is asking you the same question repeatedly, it's okay to say, hey, look at the sign or look at the list I made. We've discussed this. Don't ask me again. I don't like to be pressured. So just remember that. You, you cannot do this all the time. We cannot negotiate about every single thing, okay? But some things are okay to negotiate about. And some things, you know, are no bargain issues and we're not open to negotiation. So it's hard for Gemini parents in the heat of the moment when we're discussing something with our kid or maybe having an argument or this back and forth conversation. It's difficult for us to make a snap decision because there's so many inputs coming at us at once. So it's okay to make the decisions when you're by yourself, you're not triggered, people are not asking you for things, people are not asking you questions, and to really consider the issue, right? And make a decision and then communicate it later. Hey, this is the decision I made. You may not like it, but this is the decision. Please don't ask me again. I've thought about it. I'm not open to negotiating on this particular decision. So, so it's important to show not only the consistency regarding your emotions, but consistency regarding communication. And it's okay to say in the heat of the moment, I'm not ready to make a decision about this. If you keep asking me right now, the answer is gonna be no. But I need 24 hours, two days, a week, a month to think about this. Please do not ask me again before a week. I do that with my kid. I need to think about this for 48 hours. Please do not bother me about this for 48 hours. If you do, I'm gonna take another 48 hours to think about it. Or if you continue to bug me about this, if you want an answer right now, the answer is no. If you're not gonna let me think about it, the answer is no. So those are ways of dealing with that without the parent feeling pressured. And you may think, well, the parent's being pressured by the kid. Yeah, Aquarius kids are very intelligent. <laughs> They will, they know, kids know, man, any energy, kids figure out how to get what they want from parents. And that's, yeah, that's kids' jobs. They're not necessarily being manipulative. I mean, they figure out how to get what they want. They test boundaries. That's what they do, no matter the age. So, you know, it's not necessarily wrong. It certainly doesn't make the kid a bad kid. It's just, that's what they do. They figure out quickly the strategy to use to get the answer they want from the parent, right? So, and that's, you know, it's okay to discuss, have a conversation, even negotiate. But some things you can't negotiate or some things you may just not want to, or you may be just exhausted one day. You don't want to talk about it. I'm not talking about this today. Please don't ask me today. I'm not in the frame of mind to make a decision on this issue. Because when you have two people with heavy air energy, that's what happens. You, you can get embroiled in this back and forth that then becomes, you know, very energy sapping. Ask me how I know about this. <laughs> Gemini parents are also very good at modeling healthy communication for the Aquarius child. Not necessarily because they're emotionally intuitive, right? But because Gemini is very good at using precise terminology to explain and differentiate concepts. And I go over that specific trait in detail in another video. It is, in my opinion, the best trait of the Gemini parent. This ability to parse out different concepts, distinguish concepts. And an Aquarius child, that's very helpful because Aquarius has that pension too. It's an intellectual, logical air sign. Now, this is uh, an area that I really like to talk about. Gemini, the Gemini parent can also model to the Aquarius child the benefit of having alone time. Gemini and Aquarius are both independent, freedom-loving signs, but Gemini tends to be more individualistic. Gemini is known as a social energy, and at the heart of it, it is a social energy. But it's more about communicating with other people, not necessarily being around other people. Although, as always, it depends on the energy in the chart, right? We don't have a chart in front of us right now, so we're talking about these energies kind of um, on their own. Um, Aquarius is much more apt to have an entourage or be surrounded by people. It is a very social sign, more so than Gemini. They like to be, remember, Aquarius is compelled to be part of the group to belong to a group, to identify with the group. Gemini is not like that. Gemini is much more individualistic. And interestingly, ask your Gemini sun friends, mostly Gemini sun, because Gemini moon tends to be more social, but Gemini sun people like a lot of alone time. It's very interesting. Every Gemini sun person I know, myself included, 
we like our alone time and we make sure to get that. And you, the Gemini parent, can model that for your Aquarius child. In fact, I think, personally think that is one of the healthiest things we can model for kids is how to be comfortable on our own, alone. That you don't need a relationship or a friendship to be complete. That you don't need another person to make you feel complete. That you are complete on your own, right? That is one of the best gifts we can give our kids to be happy on your own. When you're a happy whole person on your own, you have so much more to offer another person in a relationship, a future relationship or a friendship, and you will attract people who are healthy and whole, right? So that's another, it's sometimes overlooked, but I think that is another really good part of this uh, dynamic with the Gemini parent and the Aquarius child. So being a two air energies, the Gemini parent can always benefit from working on their empathy, right? Both of these energies, Gemini and Aquarius, as we said, approach the world, approach situations and people, interactions with people from a place of detachment and logic. That is their first line reaction to analyze, take in and process data. The first line reaction is not to empathize, right? It's more like to fix problems. When it's the parent, we'll talk about the parent, the first line reaction of an heir parent, Gemini parent in this case, is to fix a problem, to analyze and fix a problem. But most of the time, kids of all ages, they want to feel seen and heard first before the parent jumps in and tries to fix the problem. That is something I had to teach myself how to do because I wanted to fix whatever was wrong, correct it immediately. When my kid, who as you know, if you follow, if you follow this channel, you know I have a Scorpio kid, right? He wanted me to acknowledge and validate what he was experiencing so he felt seen and heard in his experience before I offered assistance. That is one of the biggest areas where Gemini parents can work on themselves, to comfort and validate first before offering solutions. And as kids get older, they may not want you to, to offer solutions at all or fix anything at all. They may just want you, the parent, to, to see and hear them and validate their experiences. And it is appropriate to ask your Aquarius child, hey, after you've comforted, right, and validated, hey, would you like me to help in any way? Is there anything I can do? Would you like me to talk to so-and-so? And if they say no, it's okay, I got this, respect that, right? Especially adolescents and teens, they need to learn how to problem solve. They need to learn how to self-advocate, right? Speak up for themselves. So that's appropriate. You don't have to, in fact, it's, contraindicated to jump in and fix all your kids' problems because you're preparing them for adulthood, right? But anyway, my point is, Gemini parents, we can always uh, work, continue to work on our empathy skills. And by doing so, we are modeling empathy for the Aquarius child. And as a detached, clinical, rational air sign, Aquarius also benefits from developing their empathy. And the last big area where the Gemini parent can help the Aquarius child, and this is probably my favorite, is that the Gemini parent can help the Aquarius child experience everything life has to offer. This is not too difficult because Aquarius tends to be social. They tend to enjoy experiencing life. But as we said earlier in this video, Aquarius energy tends to be a little bit more rigid than Gemini. Gemini tends to be a little bit more open to new experiences. And Gemini people, even the adults, even older adults, we continue to have this curiosity about life, about learning, about having new experiences. And this is one of the best gifts you can offer to your Aquarius child, is to help them experience the world, everything life has to offer, encourage them to try new things so that they can then pursue those things that give them most joy and most fulfillment. So that is what I wanna talk about today. I have extensive videos and playlists on Aquarius kids and Gemini kids and parents. So please check those out. And if you have any questions or requests for future videos, please leave a comment below and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.